get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Dmitry Dragalov, founder of Criminally Prolific and a service, JustReachOut.io, where he helps startups find and pitch journalists. Now, Dimitri has a lot of superhuman feats, some of them including helping a startup from zero to 40 million page views and getting acquired by Google, helping another startup from zero to 5 million users and eventually getting acquired by AVG, and he got 60 leads in 24 hours with just a landing page and a LinkedIn group, so you could probably do it too. Dimitri, thanks for joining me. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Since it's Inspired Insider... I want to know, you know, we talked about a lot about successes and I want to know what's been one of the lowest points. What's been a tough time that you had to push forward through? I think just, you know, criminally prolific. It's the reason I named it criminally prolific, by the way, is it's so prolific. It's criminal. So <laughs> okay. my wife came up with the name. So it's like, I'm so prolific. Like, but like going on my own, I think not working for anybody, um, and being in my home, on my own, my laptop, was just a kind of like a lonely place to be where I didn't know kind of how to build the business going forward, where I had these skills on how to market stuff, but I haven't been working in marketing most of my career. And to go out on my own and say, look, like I can do some consulting, but like I don't want to be doing consulting my entire life. And... I want to build something that's sustainable and fun that's a product or a course and I just don't know how to do all that and I can keep doing consulting, I can keep helping people reach out to press and build outreach efforts or I can maybe learn some other marketing techniques but I don't know how to do something more efficient or do something like I wanted to build a tool or I wanted to build my own app or my own product, my own courses, but I didn't know how to do any of that. And I seemed like I didn't have time to do any of that because I I was like, I had to do consulting with these clients because I needed to earn cash and money and I just couldn't like... You need to feed your Nutella, Nutella habits. No. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, by that time, I think I probably lost <laughs> most of the weight. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, I just trying to figure out how to improve my business offering, mm-hmm. how to figure out what it is that I'll be kind of doing day to day, and really find my way. It took me a lot of time, and really, I think quitting working for somebody else and transitioning to working for yourself is fun but in a way it's like everybody says it's scary but I mean it's just like at some point you're thinking like what am I doing day to day that I'm going to be proud of later on Mm. like am I really fulfilled with the work I'm doing now Right. and to a point I guess I was then but now you know that I found exactly kind of what I'm going to be doing and really love what I'm doing then it's like much more like exciting yeah, coming rewarding. to work day to day yeah yeah rewarding because when you were when i was just fresh off just starting out by myself it just i didn't know kind of how to pitch my services i didn't know like exactly how much to charge and i would spend way like tons more time trying to impress clients and and i don't know just i guess um i didn't want to just sell my time for money and Mm -hmm. I I found it really tough to figure out what else I can do Mm -hmm. and not constantly do that because I can only do so much of it and I looked around and people were building consulting businesses and I was like 
that's kind of tough. Like, I don't want to have a consulting business. It's okay, but it, like consulting business means I have to hire way more people and have them report to me, and we're going to sell a lot more time for a lot more money. And I really like was looking around. I'm like, everybody has a, some kind of product or like not everybody, but people that I was helping or my clients, they had products or, right. or things that would just generate revenue that I, they could live happily with. And, you know, like interviewing Tim Ferriss, the whole thing, like for our work week, like I met these characters that would not spend all their time working. And I wanted to be that guy. Like I wanted to have, you know, work five hours a day and right. still have a business and be able to live off of it. I didn't want to be on my laptop at night and worrying about stuff that, and dealing with calls and people. And, and so, yeah, I guess the, there was like a lot of just setbacks. Like, I don't want to do consulting. I have to do it. I, like, how do I get to this part? Yeah. Where, like, and so, yeah, that was some of the lower points, I yeah. guess, in my sort of like entrepreneur's journey, I guess. And I think, I mean, that's so common. Everyone is trying to figure out what their calling is, right? What they're meant to do and what will be rewarding for them. How did you put yourself in a place to figure that out or did it just naturally come over time? No, I think I put myself into it, I guess. I um, deliberately quit software engineering and mm -hmm. moved to California because I wanted something new. Mm -hmm. um, Deliberately tried the business side of things, trying to figure out what do I want to do mm -hmm. in terms of maybe maybe software engineering isn't my thing. Maybe like marketing or business might be my thing. And I like working with Renal, I kind of it was a lot of fun, but I couldn't get a job after an internship just because like I didn't have that much that much um, experience. So I needed a little more experience. So. I volunteered some more, and you know, eventually I got the job at Zurb, and it was a design firm. And there, I really needed to take everything I learned during internship and put it to use. And it was a pretty harsh environment. Like I was the only marketer there. I didn't know what I was doing. This was the first time I was a marketer, and so and people expected a lot from me. And so it was a design firm. How do I get them seen by everyone? And so I tried everything, like all sorts of like reaching out to people but you know like nobody's gonna write a story about design firm hmm. and so I started doing stuff like let's go critique TechCrunch and their design and post it on our blog and get them to cover us or, and that was crazy like that was like the biggest I think the biggest traffic days that they've had uh, and and so like I started getting designers to write uh, interesting plugins and, and tools for the community to use and feature those tools and that's how we started going but I was trying to learn you know this was fun but like working there was fun uh, but I always like was looking for that like Tim Ferriss lifestyle trying to figure out how can I get to a point where I have my own business mm -hmm. I don't have to answer to anybody else I can take time off whenever I want and be able to not work that much and be able to generate enough money to just live comfortably, travel the world. And so I quit Zurb again. I was six years down the line living in California. Like, look, I'm going to travel the world with my wife for six months. And that's mm -hmm. what we did. We kept this blog. We quit our jobs and we're traveling around the world. Well, traveling around the world, I kept thinking, like, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to reach that goal? Of, hey, that my own thing. I'm not working that much. It's fun, and so <laughs> I came back. I was like, "Look, I'm gonna try consulting, but really, I'm gonna try and build like some kind of product, some kind of course that's gonna generate money for me." And that's what I ended up focusing on through my consulting over the three years or whatever since we've come back from that trip around the world. Um, I kind of focused on doing that and it's been good and I still I'm still consulting now so I'm not like fully my product and my my course doesn't support me yet but um it's moving in the right direction right uh, so, so that's great no I appreciate you sharing your thought process and your journey through that because I think that's on the mind of almost everyone I talk to 
you know, they're, they're somewhere on that continuum, you know? And yeah. so on the flip side, Dimitri, what's been one of the proudest moments in your business, um, business career? I think just helping, like I have this testimonial stage where it's like terminally selected that sound slash testimonials where I put videos up mm -hmm. and these people send me videos about, some of them I say, they send me these giant emails and I'm like, look, I can't even feature this email on my website. Can you just record this in a video? And mm -hmm. so they record these videos and it's just how like they've transformed by me coaching them. So I kind of changed my consulting process lately and I started teaching people my skills instead of having them pay me to Do employ it. my skills. Yeah. And so I actually like cut my business a little bit because of it, because I, like they teach they learn and then they go employ the skills. Right. But as a re result, they never have to employ anybody else. Like they actually learn what I do, how right. I do it, and they'll just employ it themselves. And so it takes three months or two months to teach them how to, you know, do some type of marketing strategy and then they can just run with it and it works. Yeah. And I think some of the proudest moments is when they email me or they send me a video and say, look, like, this stuff really worked for me. It changed the way I work. And it's going to, you know, make my life much easier, much better in terms of, like, building my company, my business. And just thank you. And so it's What's really your favorite uh, testimonial, like, the best result that you saw one of your students get? Um... I don't know, like Wistia is really fun. Like Adam does like a really funny Wistia testimonial. He's just like says, look, we like tripled the traffic. We were able to get featured in all these different hmm. um, publications. Like, um, like Rami was really good, but that's very recent. I guess like Noah Kagan was kind of cool. Like to have a testimonial from him was kind of big. Yeah. I worked with him on uh, AppSumo a little bit mm -hmm. a while ago. Um, I have a whole bunch that I still haven't even put up, but yeah, just a lot of, uh, like Fong Lee, we work with him, um, he, like this long testimonial, but he's really like, he like really transformed the way he does business now and mm -hmm. does marketing and he's hired multiple people to support kind of like what we came up with and what we executed with him and it just, you know, did wonders for his business and how he markets it. Yeah. So just, I don't know, yeah. just helping people and seeing them respond, like yeah. saying, hey, this is working, thank you, this is awesome. And yeah. Dimitri, this has been hugely valuable. I appreciate your time and, and spend the time uh, educating and really sharing your expertise. Where should we point people towards? I know we mentioned several places, but um, what are a few that I should link up or that people should check out? Um, well, link up my course because it'll teach people how to do outreach. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, learn.permanentlyprolific.com. Okay. And, and um, what else? Uh, uh, besides my course, you should link up my tool, I guess, justreachout.io. That's my tool to help you find journalists or influencers to find, uh, you know, to find opportunities that can write about you and stuff. Yeah. So. And if nothing else, they should check that out because you really have a, I mean, in, in a sense, it's like such a good copywriting. You do such good copywriting because you keep it like that one sentence pitch like you preach. And then the, the way it's designed, people should just check out the way everything's laid out and designed. It's really really good so you know even if you don't want pr which you should after hearing this conversation um you should really check out how dimitri the copy he has on there and also the way he lays everything out so oh, dimitri thank you so much this has been been hugely valuable thanks thanks a lot thanks for having me what i got you can't buy it resides between my eyes walk through the fire came out if you find the same right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand